when it comes to the milk we drink, there are really two words we take for granted, and that's homogenization and pasteurization. So do you know what those two words mean? Whether they're something good or bad? Well, after this video, I'll let you decide for yourself. Come on. Let's begin with pasteurization. So pasteurization is named after the French scientist Louis Pasteur. Now in the 1860s, Pasteur was doing experiments with beer and wine, which sounds like a great time. Now what Pasteur was trying to do was understand how could he make beer and wine last longer, or how could he prevent it from spoiling so quickly? And what he discovered was he simply had to heat treat the beverage and it would last longer. What he didn't quite realize, and it would take uh, several more years of science to understand, is that this heat treatment he was doing, what actually was happening was it was killing the bacteria, yeast, and mold that are usually responsible for spoiling that beverage. So in the US, we have two different types of pasteurization that we typically use. The first one is called low temperature, long time, and we usually shorten that to LTLT. So if we use LTLT, what we do with the milk is we hold it at 145 degrees Fahrenheit for about a half hour. Now the other process you can use for pasteurization is called high temperature short time, or HTST. Now, under high temperature short time, you have to hold your raw milk at 161 degrees Fahrenheit for only 15 seconds. But both of these processes, these, these temperatures and times are very specific. And under both these processes, you would kill the most heat resistant disease causing microorganism, and that's C. burnetii. And so we've chosen these specific temperatures and times because we know we will destroy an uh, organism that could make us sick, and we know that organism is also the most heat resistant. So if we destroy C. burnetii, we know we have destroyed all the other microorganisms that are more susceptible to the heat. Fast forward to today and we still use this heat treatment or pasteurization on a lot of liquids like milk. Now we don't so much care that it extends shelf life, although that is kind of nice. It makes, you know, milk last longer, doesn't spoil. But what we really care about pasteurization is that it kills a lot of disease causing microorganisms. So a lot of bacteria, yeast or mold that might make us sick if we drink them with our milk. So pasteurization by definition is really a heat treatment with the goal of reducing how many harmful microorganisms are in our milk. Now, most of us probably don't worry about getting sick when we drink a glass of milk, but that was not always the case, which is why we pasteurize milk. So in 1938, a quarter of the foodborne outbreak cases were due to milk. So milk caused 25% of all foodborne infections. This is exactly why at a national level, you have to pasteurize milk in the US, right? Raw milk at the national level is illegal in the US because it gives people really nasty diseases like brucellosis, tuberculosis, um, salmonellosis, scarlet fever. It just, it, it can be really bad if you drink milk that is raw. It can actually be fatal, especially to the young and the old. So we pasteurize milk to make it safe to drink. There is one other heat treatment you might see um, on milk, and this is if you see UHT, that's ultra high temperature processing. And usually this type of milk is in these cardboard cartons and it sits um, out at room temperature. You would just find it on the shelf at a grocery store, not in the refrigerator. So UHT processing is really pasteurization and then some. It's pasteurization, but even at higher temperatures. It's usually 275 to 300 Fahrenheit for just a second or two. And so with all this heat, 
the raw milk, it actually obliterates all life forms. They're, it would kill vegetative microorganisms, spores, really anything that was in the raw milk. So this really doesn't have a chance of spoiling or making us sit, even as it sits out at room temperature. And because it's really what we call commercially sterile, it has a shelf life of up to a year, right? And so this type of milk can only sit out at these higher temperatures because it's had this UHT or ultra high temperature processing. All right, let's move on to homogenization. So this is a process that really has more to do with the texture or mouthfeel of milk. So let's imagine for one second, you go to your refrigerator, you grab your carton of milk and you see a whole layer of oil sitting on top of the rest of the liquid. Would you like that? Would you want to drink just the oil and then the watery mixture below it? I'm guessing probably not, which is exactly why we homogenize milk. So milk naturally has the oil separate off from the water. You might call this a cream layer. The oil goes on top. To prevent this separation, we break these, this oil into very tiny microscopic droplets and disperse them throughout the rest of the liquid. This process is known as homogenization. To homogenize our milk, what we have to do is we take hot milk and we force it with a lot of pressure, we force it through a really small orifice or like a really tiny hole. So what happens as milk is homogenized, it goes through this orifice and the oil droplets are reduced to smaller sizes. And what we usually do with milk during homogenization is called two passes or it's homogenized twice. So the first pass as the milk is originally homogenized or goes to that tiny orifice, what this does is reduce the oil droplet size. But what tends to happen is these small oil droplets form these larger clusters or they all aggregate up. So we pass it through the homogenizer again. This would be a second pass. And what this second pass does is it separates all those clusters and aggregates into individual oil droplets. And this is what we want in milk because these small oil droplets, they don't cream off as quickly as the larger droplets. So we produce these small droplets so that we don't see a cream layer in our milk. Right? We can store milk in our fridge for a week or two and we don't notice any visual, visible changes. And that's really because we use homogenization to make super small oil droplets. So those two words, homogenization and pasteurization, those are processes done to our milk to make it a safe and stable product that we see in the grocery store. So myself, I'm really glad my milk is pasteurized and homogenized, but I think it's really good to question any words you see on your food and you don't know what they mean because that's what you eat and put in your body. So I hope this was helpful to you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll talk to you next time.